Hello and welcome to D-Pad Experience Presents Marvel Champions. D-Pad Experience is a weekly video game podcast found on all podcast providers. Today, we are going to be taking on the Sandman. Let's take a look at Sandman. So Sandman has one scheme to, and two attack. He has 16 hit points. His Sand Blast is a force interrupt. When he attacks you, that attack deals indirect damage. If your identity takes any amount of damage from that attack, you will resolve Surging Sand's ability on the city streets. And the city streets is this environment card right here, which reads, place one sand counter here. Discard cards from the top of the encounter deck equal to the number of sand counters here. So basically, if Sandman attacks you and hits you and deals damage, you place a sand counter here and then discard cards from the encounter deck equal to the amount of sand counters on this card and if this starts to get high that encounter deck is going to go down really quick and you will eventually get an acceleration token on the main scheme all right let's take a look down here exhaust uh, so a hero action exhaust a character you control and remove sand counters from here equal to that character's attack limit once per round per player so I can exhaust my hero and remove sand counters from this. So I need to control this environment while taking on the Sandman. And let's not forget about what he will be doing. Here is Sandman's scheme. Uh, his, the Sandman floods the city streets with rushing sands, putting innocent bystanders in great danger. After an acceleration token is placed on this scheme, deal three indirect damage to the first player. So Sandman is going to be running through his encounter deck. And we know that if his encounter deck reaches zero and I have to reshuffle that deck, I get an acceleration token, which is going to give me three indirect damage. So this has nine I got to deal with. So I got to control the main scheme. I got to take his health down and I need to worry about those sand counters on the environment, which is a lot. But I find this... I like to test new decks with the Sandman because I find him a little more reasonable than Rhino. I used to test all of my decks on Rhino and that can be a bit swingy. You know, Rhino can end the game fairly quickly with uh, by thwarting out because his main scheme only has seven and Sandman has nine. It's a little bit easier to deal with when you're playing true solo. And this is a true solo deck that I always play. So anytime you watch me play, it will always be true solo. And who will we, we be playing with today against the Sandman? Nova. We are going to be using one of the newer heroes in the game, Nova, right? We have Sam Alexander, also known as Nova. Let's see what Sam Alexander can do. He's got a, a three recovery. His alter ego is spend one resource of any type and search the deck and discard pile for Supernova Helmet. Add it to your hand. Put it into play instead if I played for this using a wild resource. So I'm going to be hoping that my opening hand is going to have a wild resource so that I can get that Supernova Helmet into play. I might even mulligan to try to get it. Let's see what he does in his Nova form. He's got one thwart, one attack, and two defense. Not my favorite stat line. Uh, the one and one on the thwart and the attack are going to make things a little tough. Two defense isn't that bad if I get into a pinch. And his response is, after you use one of Nova's basic powers, ready Super Nova Helmet. So, Nova Helmet is going to be very important for us in order to beat Sandman. So we're going to want to make sure that we get that right away, trying to use uh, a wild resource to generate that Nova Helmet. Now, I am going to be using Nova's pre-made deck that comes with him, the Aggression deck. The reason why I've decided for that for this particular video is because Nova's a new hero and you know I wanted people to see what you're getting out of the box. And I've recently started to play the pre-made decks that they come with because it's just a quick way to get in to see how the heroes play and just understand them. But this is an aggression deck, and I'm not a big fan of aggression decks, true solo. But I've made some successful ones. Um, one of my 
favorites is Venoms. Um, but we're not talking about Venom right now. So I don't often make aggression decks. So we're going to see how this one fares against Sandman. Because I know Sandman has a lot going on. I'm interested to see how Nova handles the threat on the scheme being an aggression uh it being this being a pre-made aggression deck so let's draw our six cards that nova's gonna get us one two three four five and six and let's see what we've got we've given sandman his 16 health we have 10 let's see if we can beat him so one by one Deals two damage to an enemy. If this attack defeats that enemy, deal two damage to an enemy. This is good for minions. I don't see a minion here. Not a great opening hand. Pot shot. To cost, double the number of wild resources generated while paying for this card. So if I can get some wild resources, it's actually only a one cost event. Deal four damage. Love that. Chase them down. This is an older card. Don't love this. After your hero attacks and defeats an enemy, remove two threat from the scheme. No minions. Not that useful right now. Everyday Hero. While your identity has the civilian trait, this card can be spent and after I play this card, I heal one damage. So kind of useless right now. However, we get that wild resource, which is going to give us the new Nova helmet right away. Another chase him down. Can't use this right now. Not great. Pot shot. So I've got two pot shots in my hand, which I love, and the one by one. Now I normally don't mulligan. I usually like to try to play all my cards, but this chase them down is literally gonna do nothing for me right now. Nothing at all, because I can't defeat anybody and this is useless. So we're going to mulligan these two for two more. We have a light speed flight, which again, doubles the number of wild resources generated while paying for this card and removes three threat. And a connection to the world mine. Connection to the world mine does not count towards your hand size. And it's a wild resource, meaning this card doesn't count. So I get another card. Power of Aggression. This We've seen this before, right? Double, it's a wild resource. Doubles the number of, of resources it generates while paying for an aggression event. I don't have a two cost aggression event. So I might, I don't like holding cards, but we'll see what happens. So I'm definitely going to use his ability to grab my supernova helmet my supernova helmet using my wild resource right which means i get to put it into play automatically now i'm not seeing anywhere where this says shuffle my deck afterwards right so i get to search my deck for the helmet and add it to my hand uh, without necessarily having to shuffle so i kind of get to see what's going on in my next so we'll start here to see what's going to be coming out all right, we have a mix between attack events. Oh, Moon Girl, I really want to get her out. But, you know, I'm kind of just looking for my helmet right now. So, and man, that would have been, did I miss it? Where's my helmet? Ah, it was all the way at the bottom. So, all right, I don't need to shuffle because it did not tell me to shuffle. And we all know that you only play what the cards tell you. Doesn't tell me to shuffle, and I'm not going to shuffle. And what does Supernova Helmet do that you ask? Sure. So Nova gets, gains the aerial trait and exhaust the helmet and generate a wild resource. So now that we've got that in play, I can... I'm going to need... Yeah, I definitely need to... Oh, I forgot to give him his threat for his scheme. So I like to use dice to represent... Uh, instead of the tokens, because I find that a little bit easier. His main scheme is going to start with two, right? I use these green dice as generic counters. So his city in the streets started with four. That means if he resolves that in any way, I have to discard four cards from the encounter deck. All right. I see no reason to stay in Alter Ego. None of these can be used in Alter Ego, it'll be a waste of a turn. So I have to flip. Sometimes I like to stay in Alter Ego off the bat if I get a an ally, but I got nothing there. So now don't forget, his response is, after I use one of his basic powers, I can ready the helmet. So I'm gonna wanna use this helmet first, then attack with him, ready the helmet again. 
So let's see what I will be using in my first shot. So I'm gonna kinda wanna use as many of these as possible because I like trying to use my cards and end with nothing in my hand. So these are two resource generators, right? I can play this pot shot first, right? Remember, if I use a wild resource, it doubles that, so I only need one wild resource for this, so I will be using my Nova Helmet for this. Playing pot shot, dealing four damage to our buddy Sandman. One, two, three, and four. Now it says if I use one of his basic abilities, then I can ready the helmet. City in the streets has me exhaust the hero to remove one of the counters, which I like doing, but I kind of want to get that helmet going again. Let's see what I can do without it. Uh, so I'm going to use my connection to the world mine to play another pot shot, dealing another four damage. One, two, three, and four. So he is at eight health. I still haven't used Nova's main ability. I can remove three threat from the main scheme, which I th think I'm gonna wanna do now. I'm technically overpaying because it's only got two, but I know how Sandman can be, and I kind of want to control everything as best as possible, so I'm going to use my power of regression, since it's a wild resource, and this doubles the amount of resources generated to pay for this, to remove all the threat currently from the scheme, and I've got this one card in my hand that I could do two damage with, but that means I won't be able to do anything with City in the Streets yet. I think, uh, yeah, you know what? Let's go crazy. I'll deal one damage, right, to him, which will ready my helmet. I will use my helmet again to generate the one for this. This is a two damage attack, so that's another three he's taking. So one, two, and three. So we did 11 damage in that first round, which is really nice. But he's still got four counters on the, sand, on the uh, City in the Streets event, which I don't love but that's okay. Hopefully it won't turn out that bad. All right, so we're gonna draw, we're readying up. I'm gonna draw five, one, two, three, four, five, because Nova in his Nova form has a hand size of five. Let's see what we got. We know a little bit of what we got. Is uh, that moon girl here? No. All right, so nothing to help us here with defending at all. He has a defense card, but I got nothing here. So let's see how this is gonna play out. We have one threat going on the main scheme. He is going to attack me now for two. I think I'm gonna take the hit. Still early in the game. I have nothing here. This is gonna remove threat. This is an attack. This is an attack. So I think I wanna take the hit for now. So he's gonna hit me for two plus two, so he's hitting me for four. One, two, three, and four. I'm down to six health already. Don't love that, but it's okay. And that's gonna resolve his sandblast. So that as adding one counter here, and we're discarding five cards. One, two, three, four. We got one more coming and five. Now, if you're wondering why that's bad, again, if that gets down to nothing, that gets an acceleration token and I automatically take three in direct damage. Let's draw his encounter card. I hate this card. Attach a Sandman when you would deal any amount of damage, discard this instead and resolve surging in the strand's ability. So we're about to lose a bunch of cards in that encounter deck if I can't if I attack him, which I will, and not looking good. I might have to switch to Alter Ego this round just to heal up and cause that city in the streets to not resolve because I've gotten to in a lot of encounters where if uh, I start running through that encounter deck, uh, it doesn't look good. 
So we have the one by one, which is deal two damage, the light speed, which is removing three threat. So this one, um, the play only if you're I have a play only if I have aerial, which I do because of the helmet, right? I deal four damage after an attack, but I number one, I don't want to attack with his base ability because I'm trying to save it for a heal. And this is a three upgrade. I have to pay for it with mental resource, which I oh I thought it was down here by accident. Uh, which I do have two to pay for, but I don't want to use the light speed for that. I'm gonna to want to say this because I'm about to I think switch into alter ego, and he means he's gonna scheme a bit. So I'm not gonna be able to use this, and this is what this does. When you play an aggression attack event, if I paid for that using a mental resource, I increase the amount of damage by uh, its printed cost. So example, if I had this in play and played the no quarter, right, which is four damage, um, that would have increased it by two, but I'm not going to use this card. So what do I want to do? I want to save my base for uh, my, I want to save my um, exhausting for a heal. And if I do any damage to him, it's going to resolve the city in the streets event. But I want this to come off because I want to be able to attack him soon. So I think I'm going to... This should be an interesting move. Okay, so I'm going to use my Nova helmet, right? To pay for the one by one to do two damage. It does no damage to him. I remove this card and I resolve sitting in the streets again, which is bringing it to six. So now I discard six, one, two, th four, five, and six. We are about a little more than halfway, about a quarter through that deck. Not happy about that. All right. So since I played, I did attack him. I attacked him. Right? This is an attack. And now I can play this pitchback, right? After I attack, deal four damage. And I will use my three cost to play for, to pay for it. So that's doing four damage. Our buddy Sandman is down to one health now. One, two, three, and four. Now, I could, I could use my base attack to hit him for the one and switch him over. But I know what his other, what his four number two does. And his four number two is going to resolve sitting in the streets again. And I don't want that to hit seven. So I'm going to flip to alter ego. I'm going to exhaust and heal myself for three, bring myself back to nine. I'm getting ready for him to go into phase two soon. And I'm going to discard no quarter. I'm gonna discard no quarter. I'm gonna hold on to the light speed flight and I'm gonna be done with my turn. So I'm going to draw up, I have a uh, control up to six. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. Let's see what we got. We have Jesse Alexander. So I can exhaust him and shuffle one copy of Connection to the World Mine from my discard pile into my deck and draw a card. Not bad, since I've already got a, a copy of the Connection to the World, my discard pile. Might want to try to play that. Moon Girl. Now, she's going to be key to me winning if I can win. And you'll see why in a bit. It has nothing to do with her response or anything like that, but specifically to the Sandman fight. Pitchback. Another free for damage attack. Uh, another free pitchback. And my light speed flight. All right. I'm feeling good about my hand just so long as he doesn't do anything insane during this part. So we will give him his two. I mean, well, one, but bringing him to two. He's going to scheme for one plus one, two. He's, so he's scheming for two. This is bringing the threat to the main scheme to four. Let's get his encounter card. Ah, oh, God damn it. All right, so I, I may change form. If I'm in hero form, I place two threat in the main scheme. If I'm in alter ego form, I cannot change to hero form during my next turn. Let's see. So right now I have the choice to 
switch into alter ego. I mean, stay in alter ego, but that means during my next turn, I cannot switch to hero form. Okay. Or I can switch to hero form right now. And then I can, but then I'm going to have to add two threats to the main scheme. So let's see what we got. This will help have me remove three threat from the main scheme. I want to play this. The Jesse Alexander is an alter ego action. Moon Girl, I actually don't want her for the thwart. Let's see, let's see what I need to play to get Moon Girl out. So if I wanted to play Moon Girl, right, I would need uh let's see. Do I have one, two, three, four? I feel like I'm missing a card. Did I play a card? I should go back and rewind this. One, two, three, four, five. I'm supposed to have six. You see that, right? <laughs> so I, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I'm missing a card. So I need another card. Six. All right. So uh, remember, the connection to the world mine doesn't count towards my hand size. So technically, I get to draw another one. Getting another no quarter. What happens to another card? I guess I just didn't, uh, I guess I messed up by my draw. It's fine. All right, let's see. So what do I want to do? I want Moon Girl out, but I'm a, the threat is kind of high right now. So I also do want to play the Lightspeed Force. I think I'm going to... I have a decent deck right now. I can do some damage, even if that surging in the streets is pretty high. All right, so let's let's flip. Let's flip, which means that main scheme is gonna gain three. Was it three or two? Two threat. All right, so this is going to six. So I flipped, right? Let's see what I can do here. Oh, you know what I mean? I can do, I can still flip after this turn. So I change right now, but, but this doesn't say anything about, this only says that if I'm in alter ego form, I can't change to hero form, but that doesn't mean I can't change to alter ego form again, which is what I might do to avoid some damage. All right, now, it's not even the damage I'm worried about. It's the surging in the streets. So the first thing that I wanna do is I want to get Moon Girl out and you'll see why right now. So I'm gonna use the no quarter to pay for it, right? Um, because this card deals four damage to an enemy for each point of excess damage dealt to the enemy by this attack. Discard the top cards of your deck and add each aggression to um, my hand that was discarded. Now this is interesting. So I, he's got one health left, right? And this deals four damage. And for each excess point of damage, I can um, discard the top cards of my deck. I've searched a lot everywhere and it it does seem that it does seem correct me if i'm wrong if you've read this anywhere else but this uh i'm technically doing excess damage to him right now since he only has one and switching to his next form so i might be able to use this to see if i can draw some aggression cards so let's 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 hold this guy right here let's hold that one so i still wanted to get moon girl out I really like this card, but right now, especially since he's going to phase two, I'm gonna use this as a resource. So I'm gonna use the Nova Helmet right now for one resource, I need two more. This is definitely gonna be my number two, right? And I need one more thing to pay with. Yeah, I think, you know, I've I've got uh, let's let's do just that example. Let, let's go crazy. Let's go crazy. So I brought out Moon Girl. Oh, what did I pay for her with? So I paid for her with a wild resource. You'll see why this is important. Oh my god, this is actually a good a good move without me even realizing it. Mental resource, wild resource, which counts as a mental resource, supernova helmet generates a wild resource. So I've technically played with her for I paid with her for her with three mental resources. And if I pay for her for each mental resource I've used to pay for her, I draw a card. So she's coming into play with three health and I draw three cards. 
because I paid for her for all with all three mental resources. So one, this is that everyday hero. Two, champions mobile bunker. Three, the hone technique. Now this one's gonna be hard to get into play right now. I'm not gonna play it. I actually don't love this card a lot. It's expensive and I don't know, not my favorite card. Champions mobile bunker though. Cost two, right? Exhaust the mobile bunker and choose an identity with the champion trait. The player who controls that identity may draw two cards and discard two, discard two cards. So if I can get this out, I can draw two and discard two. But let's see if I can get this out. So what did I want Moon Girl out for, right? If I wasn't going to do much with her. I'm not going to thwart with her. I'm not going to attack with her. Here's what I'm going to do with her. Let's take a look at the city in the streets again. Exhaust a character you control and remove sand counters from here equal to that character's attack. I'm going to exhaust Moon Girl. She's got a two attack. Bring this down to four. That's actually really important because I'm just exhausting Moon Girl. She doesn't take any damage. I'm going to be using her to take to control that environment. So I also wanted to control that main scheme, right? So I needed to play this. Do I have a wild resource in my hand? I do, right? I do, but if I play this while I'm in Alter Ego form, I can heal a damage. So let's see, the champion's mobile bunker. Will I be able to bring this out? Actually, yeah. Uh, did I want to do the no quarter? Hmm. I could technically look at the top three cards in my deck, but they're they're not aggression. I'm going to have to discard them. I really don't want to do that. I don't want to do that because I'm looking for some more Nova-specific cards. So let us... What did I want to do? I wanted to save this to pay for this, to use this in my Alter Ego form, if possible. You know what? I may be able... To, I actually... Mm, I don't want to play this mobile bunker. I really don't want to do it. Sorry, I mean, I didn't want to pay the, I didn't want to use the no quarter. I wanted to use the no, the mobile bunker because I can draw two cards. Let's first attack with Nova. Yeah, let's attack with Nova, right? It's gonna deal one damage, bringing Sandman's first form down. First form is down. Second form has 18 health. So we got some work to do. When reveal resolve sur surging sands ability. So this is gonna bring this to five or discarding five. One, two, three, four, and five. This is getting thin. Okay. Because I've used this, I can now ready my Nova helmet. And I've attacked, right? So let's let's use these two to pay for the mobile bunker. The mobile bunker will let me draw two cards and then discard any two that I want. Yeah, that's fair. So I'm using this to draw two. One, two, ooh. After you play an attack event, exhaust this card and your hero gets plus one attack until the end of the phase. Like this. But this no quarter does four damage. All right, anywho, we have our Nova helmet ready. We're going to use it to pay for our light speed, right? Removing three threat, bringing this down to three. What do I want to do now? So he attacked before, right? So I'm going to use... You know what? I'm going to use these two to pay for two pitchbacks, dealing eight damage to our buddy Sandman here, bringing him down to 10 health. Now, I still have this everyday hero in my hand, which now I can't do anything with because I'm not in my alter ego ability. 
but I can flip to it now. I can flip to it. I... I don't... Yeah, you know what? I'm going to. I'm going to flip to my alter ego ability. I f it's only got three thread in the scheme. I feel confident I can survive that. So I'm drawing to six. Let's draw correctly this time. So this is one, two, three, four, five, and six. I I'm glad that I did that because he's got a defense card, which I didn't get. So... All right, so this is going to four. He's going to scheme for one plus two for three, bringing this to seven. Now I'm getting a little nervous. Okay, I feel less nervous. So, because if he, there's that one card, I forget it was, it's that, if you play this, you know what I'm talking about. It's the stupid red skull card where he schemes. I would have lost the game right here had that popped up. But instead we get the dirt trap. It's only got one thread on it, but when this is um, when this is defeated, I need to resolve Surging Sands twice. Resolve Surging Sands, resolve it again. Unless I can kill him in this turn, unless I've got a 10-point attack, Surging Sands is going to resolve again, which is not going to be fun. Do I have a 10-point attack? No. No. Let's see. It's, you know what? Strangely enough, it's possible. So let's flip over to Nova Form. All right. I'm going to hold off on Moon Girl just in case I need to control. I might need to use her to thwart right now. Oh, we didn't give our side scheme. It's one threat. Now, I'm going to try to win this turn because I need to take this off in order to, I need to re remove this side scheme in order to take threat off the main scheme, which has to happen right now, or else I'm worried about the next turn. Can I do 10 attack? Let's see. So this would be one. This is if I play an attack event, I get plus one attack. Do I have an attack event in my hand? I do have an attack event. So let's see. Um... Until the end of the round, each time Nova defeats an enemy or removes one threat, ready Nova and draw a card. Interesting. Okay. The first thing that I want to do, let's use Power of Aggression to bring out another ally, the Locust. Oh, what does Locust do? After Locust enters play, add one Aggression event from your discard pile to your hand. I didn't even realize that. That's not that bad. Oh, I know what I'm going to get. I know what I'm going to get. I actually do think I can win this round. Attack event. Pitch back. I feel good. I feel good now. All right. Let's... Let's see. What do I want to do? All right. I'm going to... Use the Supernova Helmet to bring out my upgrade. After you play an attack event, exhaust this card and your hero gains plus one attack until the end of the phase. All right. Oh, you know what I also can do? Let's exhaust this Mobile Bunker. Let's draw two cards. Oh, Miss Marble, hello. And we're gonna discard. I just need, I'm gonna discard one of them, Nova, uh, Unleash Noble Forces. So, at least in no force, we didn't talk about that. Until the end of the round, each time... Oh, I think I did. Well, I'll read it again. Until the end of the round, each time Nova defeats an enemy, remove the last threat from a scheme. Ready Nova and draw a card. Going to be really helpful right now. So, here's what we're planning on doing. I want to... Just to be safe just to be safe i'm going to thwart one with nova to remove this right but now i'm going to have to resolve surging the streets twice so this is going to six i've got to remove six from here one two three four five six 
Actually, you know what? I've changed my mind. I'm holding this and I realize how little there are in there. So let's go backwards, which is okay at times. This has got the one on there, right? I didn't actually use you, buddy. I didn't actually use you. Which means this Unleash the Nova Force isn't gonna do much. Can I do 10 to you? Let's see, so that's... No, man, I don't think there's 14 cards here, but it's okay. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We are going to... All right, got it. We're gonna use one by one, okay? To use one by one, we're gonna use uh, to pay. We're gonna pay for one by one with Unleash Nova Force, right? Deal two damage to an enemy. It is an attack event. Remember our upgrade. After I play an attack event, I gain plus one attack until the end of the phase. So I have dealt two damage to the Sandman. Eight health. Now Nova is at plus two attack. I'm going to use my pitch back. I have attacked. I have attacked with my event, right? So this that will work for this. Four damage. One, two, three, four. He's down to four health. Now because I just like to be thematic, I will attack for two with Moon Girl. Um, that is going to cost her two health, right? Bringing Sandman's health down to two. And now, because of our fluid motion plus one attack, Nova has two attack, attack for two, and the Sandman is no longer. So, I won using Nova's pre-constructed aggression deck. Overall opinions of Nova, real quick off the top of my head while it's fresh in my mind. That was pretty fun, actually. I really liked the use of the Supernova helmet. I liked the sim um, the synergy of using Nova, readying this, playing this again. It's kind of basically having two resources in your hand at once. Champion's Mobile Bunker helped me more than I thought it would, getting some cards. Moon Girl, paying for her with the multiple wild resources, which wasn't even a plan. That worked extremely well. Um, and bringing out Locust, right? That allowed me to search my uh, uh, my discard pile for an, uh, an aggression event where I pulled back the pitchback to do four damage. That That's actually what won me the game. And I didn't realize that was gonna happen. So Locust was surprisingly good. Overall, Nova as aggression felt okay. It was pretty fun. I didn't control the environment as much as I wanted to. Uh, it had six counters on it. I definitely didn't control the main scheme as much as I wanted to. It had seven on it, right? I was two away from losing. Had I drawn that stupid scheme card in the previous round, I would have lost. But overall, Nova was really fun. I'm... Nova seems to... I wouldn't say Nova likes to flip a lot, but I could see a Justice deck working fairly well. So, as I said earlier, aggression isn't my favorite play style in true solo, but we beat Sandman with this aggression deck, and I might tweak it, but Nova overall, out of the box, definitely worth a buy. I would totally recommend purchasing Nova if you're up to this point in collecting the game. He was really fun. The deck out of um, straight out was good to use. I won, you know. Sandman isn't the easiest fight, Definitely not the hardest fight. He is a great starter fight, you know, once you learn how to play. Definitely a better test fight than Rhino. You know, I, I had to do multiple things. I had to control the side scheme. I had to control the main scheme. Well, actually, I didn't control the side scheme. But uh, when I say side scheme, I mean I had to control the environment. I had to take down Sandman and control the main scheme. So that's a lot of things that I'm doing. And with the pre-built aggression deck, I was able to do it. And it wasn't even really burning down the Sandman. So, yeah, Nova, definitely 10 out of 10 recommend. Pick him up. It was really fun.